Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Well, it is Halloween evening. It is currently 1.27 a.m. Well, actually, now I guess it's November 1st, which means it's Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and, um, but we're, it's daylight savings time, so at two o'clock we, is it two o'clock or three o'clock? I think it's two o'clock. We fall back and we get another hour. So, I guess that means at two o'clock it goes back to one o'clock. I don't know. We'll see here in just a second. Yeah, it says 128 on my phone. So, we'll see. I just dropped off Tanya Jean. Um, I went and got her and we, uh, Eric was asleep, so we drove around and we talked for a little bit. Had a fun packed day today. I kind of got sad just now though because I was sitting in her driveway just kind of like looking through my social media stuff before um, I left to go vlog. Like she had walked inside and I was looking at um, Instagram and seeing like my friend Brittany's dog. Um, had on like a little Halloween t-shirt and stuff and then she had like a little mask or he had, she had put a little mask on him like a little uh, like a dog costume mask that was like an octopus and I was thinking about all of the costumes that PP used to wear and how this is like the first Halloween without PP and I started getting like really sad and um, it didn't really hit me at all today until right now but like PP and Halloween was like such a big deal because I love to get the little guy costumes. And I was thinking about, you know, I didn't pull out any of the costumes for Boo and Tucker this year. I didn't put them in any of the costumes. We did do an unboxing yesterday, last night, of um, the Bark Box and the Dapper Dog Box, which were like holiday, Halloween themed. But I didn't get them costumes this year. And you know, every year I always think about like, oh, like get them little, co even, they don't really wear them on Halloween typically, but around that time, you know, I'll put them, you know, in costumes. And we have all of Pee-Pee's costumes down in the basement. And I remember the first um, Halloween that Alex and I were together, there was this dog store. It was like this upscale dog store at the mall. It was like on the outside of the mall. And we would go in there because we used to go to H&M a lot. And it was right next to H&M. And around Halloween time, like that whole month of October, we would walk in there. And they had this Bumblebee costume. And it was so cute. But it was kind of expensive. And because um, it was like a really nice costume, you know. And I can remember Alex would say, oh, Pee-Pee wants to be a Bumblebee for Halloween. Pee and I'd say, Pee he, did he tell you that? And he'd say, yeah, he told me he wants to be a bumblebee for Halloween. So, I went and I, um, like, at that time, like, PB would, like, when Alex would stay with me on the weekends, PB would come over and stuff. And I remember I went to go pick him up from work on, like, a Friday. And I had bought the bee costume. And I surprised him with it. He also... There were, they had these like faux fur coats in there, <laughs> these huge fur coats that are like fake. Like, I mean, and they seemed really fake. But anyway, Alex was like, oh, Pee Pee wants a fake fur coat. He has to have one, he said. <laughs> so I bought this, like, I can remember that coat was like 50 bucks. And I ended up buying it for Pee Pee. He could hardly move in it. It was so cute. He always liked being in clothes. Like, he would just sit there, he liked, putting him on and if you put a little sweater on him or something like he would like lay there and sleep in it and um that's miss that dog so much you know and I can remember last year thinking to myself if we I just want one more Halloween with PP you know like I just want one more Halloween with PP and then we got one more Halloween with PP and I can remember It was like a couple days after Halloween last year and I can remember I thought to myself like this is this was probably his last Halloween like it didn't even occur to me you know like really at the time and then I can, I think I can remember or I remember thinking to myself this was probably his last Halloween you know oh, and I know that I never thought that we would make it to Christmas and 
we did. Like Boo and Tucker are such great dogs, but there's like really an absence in our house without Pee Pee and oh my god, look at that line at McDonald's, it's so long, but even if we got another dog, it wouldn't, you know, fill that absence of what he was like. He was such a great dog. And I don't know really what to do with those costumes. It's kind of like, what do you do with that stuff? Like, you know, do you just keep it forever and just look at it and... You know, after Pee Pee died, the blanket that he had like slept on for like the last month before that, which was this. This um, quilt, I don't even remember. I, I've had it, I had it before I was with Alex, this green quilt. I used to have it on the guest bedroom and like <clears throat> the apartment that I had with my ex. And, um, but PP loved that quilt so much. And Alex took that and he took his little lady, his lamb chop, so we called Lady. And his little dog Otis, that he would just put his little head on every single night. And um, he tied it with a bow and put it in the closet. And I can remember I said that I wasn't, I was like, I'm not ready to have like it, like just PP wrapped up and put away. Like I want him like, and he was like, well babe, he was like, if you want him, you know, you want it on the bed every night. And so Alex and I, before we would go to sleep at night, we would just kind of lay there in that blanket, like all, um, folded up with the toys and everything. I just laid it in between our pillows, you know, and we could, like, I could smell it and it still felt like Pee Pee was kind of there. And it was like that for like a month. And then I remember just one day, I just took it and I put it in the closet and I was like, I think it's just time, you know? I've been so happy all day today. I just did not expect this tonight. Just, you know, but. Anyway, I had a really great day today. I had a really great Halloween. And um, I had pre-filmed all of my videos for today. So I didn't, I just had to like upload my vlog. It's kind of warm in here. And uh, so I got up, Alex and I both slept in and um, I went to Macy's, I got coffee, and then I went to Macy's. Where is that coffee? Is that coffee in here? Oh, here it is. I still have the leftover coffee right here. Look, this is this cup that I bought a while ago, and I never use it, because it's a grande. But I had leftover coffee, so I put it in here. The bottle of water, I'm gonna, it's a bottle of, I have a bottle of water, and I have my Diet Coke. Something really weird is happening with the things on my car right now. It's like going through. That was weird. Um, so I got a cup of coffee. Alex was like, I'm just going to stay at home. And um, he was just like playing his um, game in bed like the whole time that I was gone. He was just relaxing and I uh, went to Macy's and I returned the shorts that I got for Florida and then I got two pairs of jeans. I got a pair of jeans that I wore tonight. Buffalo, the brand Buffalo, <clears throat> have these jeans I really like that um, they're not like skinny but they're not like wide legged either. And they're super stretchy on the waist, so they're really comfortable for me. And I got a pair of like blue jeans that are like dark. And then I got a pair of like khaki jeans that I can wear with like sweaters and flannels and stuff like that. They're real cute. And I got those, but I wore the dark jeans tonight with just a black t-shirt. Alex had like a silk shirt on that he got from ASOS that had like a skeleton thing all over the back. 
And um, then I came home and I took a shower and got dressed. We got ready to go. And um, we went over to Caroline's and we had a really fun time. Caroline and I and her husband and Alex sat in the driveway. She actually had quite a few trick-or-treaters. Like, I was kind of surprised. Like, Indianapolis had a lot of trick-or-treaters. These people at the end of our street, they had this, um, it was like that monster energy drink. The guy must have worked for a monster or something. I don't know. But anyway, they had like a tent. And then in the tent, on one side, they had like where the person would sit. Their whole yard is like, they made it like a cemetery and stuff. It was really cool. And they had like this sunken shipwreck in their yard too. They like really decorate for Halloween every year. <clears throat> but um, they had like this metal tube thing. I've seen a couple people do this. They had this like metal tube thing where you like put the candy in it and then like it's like six feet away and somebody else gets it. But like in Caroline's neighborhood, most of the people were leaving the candy on it. Like, well, she had it up on the doorstep and she, we were like sitting away. So like the kids would walk up there and get it. They all had masks on and stuff. All the kids and their parents that were walking with them. I mean, I wouldn't say there were tons of kids, but I would say there I, there were quite a few. Um, I was kind of surprised. So, um, we just sat out there with them and then Caroline had made, or Mike had made chili. And, but it had meat in it. So Alex had a bowl of chili. Caroline had made in the crock pot, her, like a, just like sauteed uh, mushrooms, but like whole mushrooms. I love mushrooms. And she said she put two packs of mushrooms, ranch and butter, and then you just let it sit in there for like forever. And they just kind of saute. She said she really, but they were really good. And then she had like a vegetable plate, and um, what else did she have? She had some like big candy bars. I had like a Hershey's bar. And um, it was fun. It was really fun. And her stepson and um, wife came over like right as we were getting ready to leave. And her son David was there. And he put on like a Batman outfit. His girlfriend was coming, but we left by the time that she was coming over there. And then we went to Melissa and Jason's. Oh, Caroline had a neighbor that stopped by too. And brought like brownies over. They were called the the book brownies. And they looked like the book from Hocus Pocus. They were really cute. My cousin's house is so adorable. Can I just tell you that like, I was telling her, because I'm, she, I just got her to read the Midnight Library. And so, Caroline and I read a lot of the same things. And it's so funny because when Caroline was growing up, like she would never have read a book. Like she had no interest in it whatsoever, right? And now Caroline and I watch like all the same Netflix shows and we watch like, and we read all the same books. And she had like said she bookmarked something on the Audible and so she was playing it for me. And I said, girl, do you listen to it that slow? She goes, yeah, it's like normal speed, just one, right? And I go, and Alex goes, Peter listens to it so fast. I don't know how you, I listen to it at two or 2.5 speed. She's like, how do you understand anything? I was playing it for her. She was like, how do you understand anything that they're saying? She's like, what? What? And I was like, I totally understand what they're saying. <laughs> and I was like saying it back to her. But anyway, um, Alex was like, he's so much like your mom. She was like, you are just like my mom, like my Aunt Kathy. She could like talk and <laughs> listen really quickly to stuff. But anyway, um, Caroline's house is so cozy. It's just so comfortable. And she has little things everywhere. I mean, she's like redone so much of her house in the last five to 10 years to really make it comfy and cozy. And like, just like their fireplace and like all new flooring and like her kitchen is all redone and beautiful. And But she just like has collected like the best of everything because She's got like stuff of her mom's and just, it's really cozy and comfy, but like, it kind of looks like, it's like comfy, but like something that you'd see in like a magazine or something. I don't even know how to explain it. Just like a cute patio, screened in patio with like a fire pit out there. <clears throat> oh, this was so funny. So, 
Um, Mike bought one of those fire pits that's like metal and it's like has the holes around it that supposedly like it doesn't like put out a lot of smoke or whatever. And our friend Eric had gotten one of those too and he was so excited when he got it. And Mike just kept on going on and on about it tonight. It was so funny. And then like every time like somebody would walk up with their kids, right? The dad would be like, it, they're called like Solo or Sola or something. And they would be like, is that one of those? And, he, and he's like, yeah. And he's like, it's totally worth the money and whatever. I told Alex when we were driving over to Melissa's, I was like, I have like never seen so many people excited about like a fire pit. Like it cracked me up. But anyway, there's where my neighbors voted. They voted at that church over here where you can see like all the signs out front. They waited five and a half hours in line to vote. Five and a half hours in line. And she was like, he was, she's like, he's so patient. He just stood there the whole time. And she was like, they had food trucks there and I would go get us food. And then I would sit in the car and then I would come back and stand with him and stuff. And I was like, were people not upset with you? Like getting in and out of line? She was like, no, everybody was doing it. She was like, cause it was so long. I said, well, I heard that they have apps that like tell you how long you like the wait is. And she said that the apps are completely inaccurate. So anyway, but she stood in line five and a half hours. Supposedly, they're saying in Indianapolis, there's going to be like two or 300 voting poll places open and you can vote at any of them if you live in Marion County, which is Indianapolis. That because so many people have like absentee voted and so many people have early voted, that Tuesday is not supposed to be so bad. I, I hope not because, ooh, I don't want to stand in line five and a half. I mean, I'll do it if I have to, but I don't want to stand in line five and a half hours. Um... I was I gonna say? So then we went over to Melissa's. We got over to Caroline's about 5.15 and we left there about 7.15. We, well, I looked at my phone and it was 7.17 and I was like, babe, we gotta go because he was in the kitchen eating his chili. <clears throat> so we left there and then uh, on the way to Melissa's we stopped by Sarah's because she had put on like this uh, huge thing in her backyard, like all these lights and animatronic things for Halloween for trick or treaters. And she only got a couple trick or treaters, but she was sitting out there with her mom and her mom's, um, her stepdad and um, this neighbor lady, and they were having a good time. And so we stopped by there because she wanted us to see it. So we stopped by, and it was really cute. And then we went to Melissa's, and it was. Uh, Melissa and Jason, Alex and I, and um, Aaron and Eric, and then her son, Aaron's son, came by later after he got off work. And um, <laughs> we were laughing. I mean, like these kids, like we, like we've known them now for twelve years, you know. And it's like, how old is he? He's like nineteen. He's gonna be twenty. I know he just turned nineteen. David, my cousin's son, is gonna be twenty in January. And I was telling Alex, I was like, what 19 year old wants to hang out with like his parents and their friends on Halloween night, like after he gets off work, you know? And it was funny because we sat there and so Melissa makes every year, this is so nice. She does this for us every year. So it's the three couples. We always get together for Halloween. And Melissa makes vegetarian chili for me in a little crock pot. And then Erin doesn't like beans in her chili. So in another little crock pot, she makes um, chili without beans for Erin. And then she makes a big crock pot for everybody else. And then she has like macaroni to go into it. And then chives and jalapenos she put out this year. And onions and... <sighs> Ritz crackers and oyster crackers and sour cream and cheese, like, you know, it wasn't mozzarella cheese, but it was like the yellow cheese you put in there. And then she made cornbread and then she made this jalapeno, like, cheddar dip that she, like, cooked in the oven and then you, like, dip tortilla chips in it. It was so fantastic. She made that for me because she knew I was a vegetarian, so, and the cornbread was called Famous Dave's or something Dave's cornbread. It was so, it was like the best cornbread I've ever had at somebody's house. It was so perfect. And with butter. And then she made homemade Rice Krispie treats and she had like cookies. And, um, what else did she have? Like tons of candy. 
I have some of the candy right here that I brought home with me, but then I have more candy that I brought home that Alex took home, because Alex took chili and stuff home, but I didn't take any of that home. Um, because I have my pumpkin things at home and some of that leftover pasta salad, but I did eat some of the pasta salad last night. Um, and then, what else did she make? Oh, she made homemade apple cider on the stove, and I had some of that. It was so good. It was just really, it was a fun night. And so we were sitting there, and like, Jason was watching some football game. We were all sitting there on the couch, just kind of talking, and they were playing Amazon music or something. It was like a Halloween station, and it was fun. They were playing like all kinds of, you know, like Halloween music and whatever. Thriller and all that, you know. And uh, Weird Science and <laughs> all those songs that are always on the Halloween tracks, you know. And Melissa was like, because they have Apple TV, and I wanted to see like the great pumpkin Charlie Brown and I think that the only place you could see it this year was on Apple TV so we were going to watch that and then we were Melissa was like well let's just what do you want to watch Halloween we usually every year watch the Roseanne Halloweens but nobody really mentioned this year I said I don't care let's just watch a movie or let's do something and so we watched some episodes of some Hall Halloween Saturday Night Live well we started watching no that was after it was over because it was over at about 11 30 12 11 30 ish and we started watching the Saturday Night Live that was on but we watched some of like these Halloween episodes of Saturday Night Live they weren't very funny one was this I think her name was Sh Shanna and it was like Shanna comes to the Halloween party or something and then we watched these like four it was Chance the Rapper and he was like these four dead people and they had to like sing this song about how they died just like these stupid skits. So anyway, we were sitting there, and I don't even know how it came up. I think Alex and Aaron's son were talking about, like, scary movies. and Because we all love scary movies, except for Jason. Jason's the only one that does not like scary movies. And so Aaron's son was like, well, I just read this article. And I had just read this article, too. He said that Sinister was found to be, like, the scariest movie that's come out in the last 20 years or something like that. I was like, oh, my God, I just read that same article. And I said, I can't remember which one Sinister is at. And I, I, I couldn't remember if it was the one with Ethan Hawke or this one with the kid. Because we were talking about Insidious and Sinister. Because Alex loves the Insidious movies. And so, Melissa was like, well, we can watch that if you want. And I was like, well, it's up to you guys. Whatever you want to watch, let's just watch something Halloween-y, you know? So, we started watching Sinister. Well, Jason doesn't really like scary movies. If you haven't seen Sinister, it's, like, pretty terrifying. Um, although, I have to say, I think it would have been scarier if it didn't become paranormal. Because about halfway through, it becomes... I mean, it's always paranormal, but it's, like... It would have been, to me, not as scary if it would have been paranormal, if it had been more of like a true crime kind of deal. Because that's always scarier to me. But anyway, Jason was like, it was so funny because we had all the lights off and stuff, and Jason was like, um, why are you guys doing this to me? Why are you making me watch this? The dogs were jumping everywhere. We had, it, it was so much fun. We had a good time. So anyway, but I'm so full because I ate so much chili Ugh, and so much dip. I went back and I got seconds and I had um, the jalapeno dip and cornbread. And I was like, enough already. Aaron's son put the jalapeno dip in his uh, chili and he said it was really good. But anyway, another, another fantastic Halloween. And... Then we went home. Alex was so tired. He said he was going to crash. He took the dogs out. And then he said he was going to sleep. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to go. And I had texted Tanya, like, before. And I was like, because she called me at, like, 8.30. And I didn't get a chance to talk to her. So I was like, are you still up? I texted her. And I was getting just getting ready to vlog. And she texted me back. And she was like, yep. And so I called her. And I was like, do you want to, um, like, drive around for a second or get a fountain pop? And she's like, well, I'll drive around for a little bit. Sure, I had a fountain pop. So we drove around and talked and just caught up because I hadn't seen her in like two days. It was nice. And yeah, that was that. And now Halloween's over and I'm ready for Christmas. Cheers. <laughs> I am though. I'm ready to... Well, I think what I'm going to do 
is I think I'm going to find... Somebody said Walmart has flannel sheets or plaid sheets, like I'm talking about the jersey sheets. So I'm going to go there tomorrow and look and see if I can find them. And then I'm thinking about ordering this comforter and the shams from uh, William Sonoma because it's like it was like $59.99 for a king size. Um, and it's red plaid. It's gorgeous. It looks like Christmas morning. And then I think I'm going to um, go to Bed Bath & Beyond and get a king size white, just plain comforter, down comforter. <clears throat> um, because we need a new one anyway. And they're on sale there because the place is closing down. And then we'll have one for any time we want to get a duvet cover. And um, so I'm thinking that's what we should do. And then we can just, we have a comforter. And even though I hate using a duvet cover, it's like, it's easier to find a duvet cover that you like, you know? And then in the spring and in the summer, we can get like a white duvet cover. Cause I love in the summer having like all white sheets and white duvet cover and stuff. Although we haven't done that in a couple of years. I mean, it's hard when you have dogs that are going in and out, you know? But do you guys like the, the look of like all white on a bed? Oh, I love that. It reminds me of like some like high-end hotel room. So I'm gonna go tomorrow and do, look at, do those two things. We're gonna go to brunch. And then Alex was gonna hang out with his mom at some point. He was asking me today, he's like, do you, have your, do you have videos to make tomorrow? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, think, kind of thinking about maybe like not making videos for a day, but we'll see. We'll see. I might. But if I don't, then I really want to spend the day like... <clears throat> well, I have to be prepared that on Tuesday, it just got really windy outside. I didn't even realize that. I drove by these bushes over here and they're like blowing like crazy in the wind. Um, I have to be prepared for that. Tuesday, I may not be able, like, I mean, if I'm at the voting booth for five plus hours, like, I may not be able to. Um, I'm not gonna wanna come home and make videos after that, you know what I mean? Or maybe I will, who knows? Well, no, I won't, because I've got my meeting that on Tuesday night. Oh, you know what? I need to ask Tanya if we're going to go because our meeting is actually in a different place on Tuesday because of the voting. So, I don't know. It may be a mood point. We may not even be going. But I really want to listen to... I want to finish this book and I want to get the Sinatra Club going. I've got to start listening to it. And I figured like if I could listen to like an hour and a half a day, I could have it done in three days. I want to kind of... I know this sounds totally corny, but I want to have a planned out like... Like I want to go through like... My month... And have it planned out, like how I'm gonna listen, but maybe just do it week by week of how I'm gonna listen to so many books a week, if that makes sense. Like if I can finish, this is how I figured it out. If I can finish between tonight and tomorrow, um, what do you call it? Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. That'll be 62. Or what's the other one, 62? 63. No, I think it was 60. I'll have to pull it here and see in just a second. If, I, if I've read 61 or 62 books, I'll have to look. But I think I can, I think I can read three to four books a week. I think I can get that done. Which if I can do that, then I can meet my goal of 100. Because I think there's like nine or 10 Nine, I think there's like nine weeks left in the year. So we'll see, anyway. I don't know what I'm gonna read after I get done with the Sinatra Club, but I do know this month, um, 
the sequel to Ready Player One comes out. It's called Ready Player Two by Ernest Cline. And um, I loved Ready Player One so much. And um, it stopped. If you saw the movie but didn't read the book, I mean, I'm telling you right now to read the book because the, the book is different. Same storyline, but it's just, it's so much more well is conceived the work no it, it's so much more well developed the characters are so much more well developed the, the background there's so many more pop cultural references are just unbelievable through the whole thing um, but I loved the first one and I really didn't think I would like it I thought I'm not going to like this at all and I ended up loving it so that's coming out and there's something else coming out. I think John Grisham has another book coming out, and I have his last one, and I haven't read it yet. The last one's called The Guardians, and I haven't read it yet, but I have it on Audible. I have so many books on Audible that I just need to, like, powerhouse through these books. I just need to start carrying my phone around with me everywhere I go and just be listening to audiobooks. Like, around the house, when I'm cleaning and doing stuff, and then when I'm driving in my car, and I just need to make a commitment for, like, the next listen to me. Listen, we're gonna do this, okay? I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Well, I figure, like, if I actually sat down and read those Lemony Snicket books, those are not too long. And I could easily finish one or two of those a week if I really got into the series and read them. And, I mean, I could easily finish one of those in two to three days. I could really easily finish one of those in a day, honestly. But they are, um, I think there's like 14 books, 13 books in the series. So, I got a plan. I got a plan in my head. <laughs> and then, you know, I was going to finish the Harry Potter books this year. But then all that stuff about J.K. Rowling came out. And I just really didn't want to support her anymore. But at the same time, I'm like... I'm like in the middle of this series and I'm not going to find out what, I mean, I know what happens at the very end, but like, I'm not going to find out what happens in the last three. Am I really going to read four books and not finish the last three in a series that like everybody on book two's already read? I'm like, I don't know. I have to wait and see how I feel about that. <sighs> I used this lotion in the last couple days. It's the pumpkin Pumpkin something and chai by Hemp's. First of all, let me just tell you, it smells so fantastic. Fan fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. I like had it was putting it on today. I said, have you used this? And, and Alex was like, he snubbed his nose out. He was like, no. And I go, just smell it. And he goes, Ugh, it smells like chai tea. It smells so good. <laughs> I started telling the story. I don't need to be telling on here. Anyway, um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? No, I don't remember. Shoot. Oh, I know what I was, like, had on one side. Do you ever have, like, two stories on either side of your head? Like, the <laughs> anyway, the story that I was going to tell. Courtney Summers, I think is her name. She wrote the book about the girl that gets kidnapped and killed. And that was, like, Sadie. It was called Sadie. And that was, like, one of the first books I read last year. And that book was so unbelievable. And... She's been, like, having her, like, second book come out or third book. I don't know. Her next book is supposedly coming out, like, forever now. And I'm like, when is this book coming out? I'm, like, ready to read the next one. If you guys didn't read Sadie, it is so fantastic. But if you're going to read it, I will tell you this. If you have Audible, get the Audible version. I want to pull in here and see how many books I've actually read. Um, get the Audible version because <clears throat> part of it. It's told like a podcast. It really is because it's this guy and he's like a true crime kind of podcast thing. And he's like telling the story. And um, so you like listen to it. Like you like when you're listening to it, it's like that part of the book is read like a podcast, like with a different um, narrator. How many? Okay, let's see. Good reads, good reads, good reads. Dream. I'm trying to get Caroline to read Cozy Mysteries. Oh my God, I have... 
all these notifications. Oh, requests. Oh my lord, I have so many requests for friendship on uh, Goodreads. Let me just go through here and add all these people really quick. I add everybody as a friend on Goodreads, because why wouldn't you? Here's all my new friends. All my new friends. Adriana. Callie, Olivia, Paris, Kylie, Stephanie, Andrea, Samantha, and Emily. Oh, I got two new messages. Okay. Screenshot that. Danielle made a recommendation for Cozy Mysteries. She sent me a message. Um, the Joanne Fluke Hannah Swinson series. The first book is The Chocolate Chip Cookie Monster Murder. It's about a baker in a small Minnesota town who gets involved in solving murders. They are fun books. They have most of them on the library app. So I messaged her back. Message sent. Okay, and let's see what this is. Oh, this is Adriana. She sent me such a sweet message. I think that's Adriana G. And I think Adriana, you watch my vlog. I'm almost positive. Um, okay, let's see me. Oh, wait. Where are my other notifications? Oh, my notifications are just. Okay. Reading challenge. I've read 62 books. So when I finish. Uh, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna make an effort tomorrow to really try to get done tomorrow or Monday the. What do you call it? Books. I'll be. I'll have. So if I finish the Halloween party tomorrow, that'd be 63. And then the first Lemony Snicket book is 64. Let me get out of this really quick. Hold on a second. Which will leave me 36 books to read for the year. How many months, how many weeks do we have left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What is that? Four books a four books a month. four books a week. Woo! That's a lot of books. Well, how many books are in the Lemony Snicket series? Let's see. Let's look that up really quick. You guys are like, Peter, we do not care. Well, I care. Lemony. Why isn't it pulling it up? Am I spelling, spelling it wrong? Snicket. Here it is. Okay. Series of unfortunate events. How many books are in the series? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So thirteen. So if I read those all, that would be thirty-six minus. Oh, my battery's low. Be twenty-three divided by nine would be two and a half books a week. Well, that's real doable. Don't you think? I do. Well. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 36 minus 13 equals 23 minus October, November, and December book club books. So it's minus three, so 20 divided by nine would be 2.2 books a week. Yeah, that's, see, it's doable. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. I really wanna meet this goal this year. I know people are like, I don't understand why it matters to you and blah, 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 whatever, but it really does. It's like anything else, like when you set a goal for yourself, you know, 
And yes, I'm just doing it for fun. But like the other thing for me is this, and I don't know if this will make sense to anybody, but like if you're a reader, I think it will make sense to you. It's like, when you love to read, you immerse yourself in these worlds and these, you know, I mean, it is escapist, right? And you meet these new characters and to some degree they feel like they become friends to you. And it's like, there are so many great books out there. You know, it's like Tanya was just telling me that she's like really loves those Aaron Hildebrand books. And she just read a trilogy this weekend. She like started on Friday with like book one and then she finished like book two today. And like tonight she was finishing book three, like when I got her and she was almost done with it. And she said she'll probably finish it either tonight or tomorrow. And, um, you know, like there's so many, Tanya reads so much. She probably has read 200, 300 books already this year. But, um, she doesn't keep track of it anywhere. But, um, you know, when you know that there are so many great books out there and then it's like, well, if I made a concerted effort to read more, to read faster, you know, then I can be exposed to so much more of what is out there, you know? And, um, and be introduced to new characters and new worlds and new storylines, you know? I think especially, like, recently, like, really liking the cozy mysteries. I was trying to explain to the Caroline what they were. And she was like, well, which one would you recommend to me the most? And I said, mm, I probably would recommend the Misfortune series because that's the one I like the most. And I think she would like it. And, um, but I said, they're just, like, they're feel-good books. You know, they're mysteries. But, and I would say, like, I like to be, like slightly scared you know what I mean like murder she wrote kind of slightly scared but um like not too scared you know what I mean but um where am I out on the camera is the battery okay the battery is okay I mean I don't want to be too scared you know what I mean but um I mean I do like to read some scary stuff sometimes you know but um like the true crime stuff I like to read that's scary anyway I don't know what I was saying but It's really fun to get into a world, especially like when you're lucky enough to find books that you cannot put down. Like that's one of the things I absolutely love is when you're reading a book and you cannot put it down. I think that's one of the problems that I'm having with this Agatha Christie book. Like usually like characters catch me right away. Like I can tell you just like, like with dating, I can tell you within like the first five or 10 minutes whether I'm wasting my time or whatnot. You know, like with reading a book, I can typically, I can typically tell within like the first, you know, a couple chapters, if it's going to like be a book that I really cannot put down and I love reading or if I'm bored with it. And like, I'm intrigued by this book because I want to find out what happened. Um, I kind of would like to read it, to be honest with you. This is, I looked it up. This is the 30, this is book 38 in the Hercule Poirot, um, Hercule Poirot. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I watched some of the movies back in the day, I should know, but anyway, series. Um, I wouldn't mind reading all of them in the series, but there are so many great books out there. Like when I was reading, oh, I don't know, I didn't talk about this on here. So there's a website, actually somebody recommended it to me and then I found what they were talking about. Like I didn't look it up at the time, they recommended it in a comment, either on this or on my booktube channel. But then I Googled, like they, I, could re I was remembering that somebody had said something and so I Googled like Cozy Mystery and it pulled up this website. And this website is literally like, the, all if somebody knows who the booktuber is that talks about all cozy books will you let me know in the comment section below or i can find it probably in the comment section of my booktube video because somebody recommended to me this booktuber and she reads like all cozy mysteries but this website this woman has she like goes in and she defines what a cozy mystery is it's a really great website it's just like a blog she started well she has a blog associated with it but then she has like listed like every major like well some of the ones that i was kind of surprised weren't on there like the misfortune series i don't think is on there and dorinda jones isn't on there um 
but she like has like every cozy mystery writer mostly. I mean, it's like she's got tons and tons and tons on there. She has all the awards and who has won the awards. And then she has TV shows and movies as well of like who you might be interested in or like what you might be interested in watching or it, it's just, it's a really great website. And I can't remember, it's called, I think it's called cozy slash mystery. That's it, dot com. But anyway, I think for me, like with the series, it's like a long-term investment in the characters, but a short-term investment in the book because the books are not super long, if that makes sense. I never thought like I would be real taken with reading that stuff. I just really never did. And now here I am kind of like these books that I made fun of. I didn't never make fun of them really. Well, like the Debbie McComber ones, I totally made fun of. Um, maybe I should try another one of her. She does mostly Christmas books, but, um, you know, these books that I just like couldn't even, I just didn't never imagine myself reading is now what I'm loving at this point. You know, it's crazy to think that. Has anybody read J.A. Jans? Somebody was recommending, was it somebody recommended J.A. Jans to me? I don't even know if it's a he or a she. But I saw it on that website, and I was like, now that's a name I know, because I see J.A.J. and said that, like, the bookstore, or, like, you know, in the paperback section and stuff, stuff like that. Oh, now my battery's at half. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I'm going to get off here in a couple minutes anyway, because I want to listen to that book. Oh, it did go back. It went back to 114. Yep. Fell back where it's 114 in the morning now. Isn't that weird? How that works. I'm kind of surprised my car did it. Usually you have to go back in and set that on your car. But it didn't have, I didn't have to do that tonight. Do you guys have plans for um, Christmas season for November and December? Sarah was saying today that she's just going to take down her Halloween stuff and put up her Christmas stuff. And I said, I think I kind of want to do the same thing, but I don't know that I want to put the Christmas tree up that early. Well, here's the thing. Our Christmas tree goes up literally right next to the fireplace, our little Christmas tree. And I still need to have somebody come out and look at the fireplace. So I'm not going through a whole winter with no fireplace this year. I'm just not going to do it. Um, so I need to, um, I need to get a hold of somebody to come out. I keep on saying that. I, I forget to call. I'll call on Monday. Such a pretty night. Did you guys see the moon tonight? I don't know where, how, some, when I went through Starbucks, the woman that works at Starbucks, she told me it was called a bloom. I always want to say that, this girl or guy that works from, but anyway, this woman that works at Starbucks, she's so nice. Um, she said it was a blue moon tonight. She'd never seen a blue moon. I don't know what that means, but it was so beautiful tonight. The moon was just like, was unbelievably full. It was a full moon tonight, I think. To make a, you have to make a wish on your full moon. weird that it's Halloween and everything's closed down for the night. When we were at Caroline's house tonight, we were talking, we started getting talking about serial killers and all kinds of stuff. I don't know, because Caroline and I, we like read a lot of the true crime stuff. We were talking about the Chris Watts case or something. I can't remember how we got talking, what we were talking about. But Alex asked Caroline, because she's a realtor, if, do you have to disclose if, like if somebody was murdered in a house? And she said, no, unless they ask. She said, you don't have to tell them. She said, but unless they ask. She said, but the thing is, like in Indianapolis, 
she was like, I don't know how it would be like if somebody moved here from an out, out of town. She was like, but in Indianapolis, it's such a small town that when like a major, like that's a major thing that's happened that people typically know anyway. And she's like, so I always just disclose. I always just tell them, you know, like this happened at the house or whatever. And it can be anything from like the former owner dying or, you know, whatever. And, um, and she was like, but like typically people don't have like a huge issue with that. And I said, never. And she was like, no, she's like, you know, that house by us, she was like, um, mom's cause her mom was a realtor too. She was like, you know, mom sold that house. And I was like, which house by you? Or she said the house by us. And I was like, which house by us? And she was like the ax murderer house. And I was like, Ugh. I said, I thought they took that house down. And she was like, no, she was like, mom sold it. And, um, and she said, but everybody in that neighborhood knew what had happened. So there was this case. I didn't think the house was still the same house. I thought they took it down and they like rebuilt a house, but that, I guess that's Caroline said, no, nope, it's the exact same house. She's like, mom sold that house to the people that live in it now or the last people that lived in it or whatever. And I said, um, so the case was, I think it was, it was one kid or two kids. I can't remember. But it was on, I think on Christmas Eve. This is literally, you guys, I'm not even lying to you. Probably 45, well, in a car driving. Like, not 45 seconds, but two minutes from our house. And two minutes from Melissa and Jason's house. This, um, this kid or two kids, they came into this, uh, minister and his wife on Christmas Eve and they killed them with an ax and then they like cut the minister's head off and put it underneath the Christmas tree. I don't know when this would have happened. I actually looked it up probably six months ago. Melissa and I were talking about it because it's right in our neighborhood and Melissa, I think Melissa was the one that said that the house had been taken down and Caroline was like, nope, it hasn't. And so we started getting talking about like all of these houses. I supposedly Fox Hollow Farms where the her Baumeister guy lived. Supposedly that house is up for sale again. Caroline was like, you should buy that house. And she was like, and give tours. I was like, I could not do that. But I said, I would be interested to know how much it's listed for because they can't keep people in that house. Like, I could live in a house. Well, my mom passed away, but she didn't pass away in the, the condo and we live there, you know? But like, I, but if, like, let's just say if she had, I think I could live there and I wouldn't be weirded out by that if, you know, somebody had passed away. But there's a difference between somebody passing away and somebody being like, murdered. I mean, and not only that, but like 29 people being murdered. And that, I don't know that I could live in that house. And that house is big. I would be scared walking around that house by myself anyway. I honestly don't know how. I mean, they had they had kids that lived in that. Well, I mean, he had kids, but the the couple that lived there when we went to go do the paranormal investigation, I think they had like their sons were in like high school when they lived like the majority of the time they lived there. They were older than that now, but I just can't imagine living in that house. Do you know what I wonder? I have never, like, there's a story about the House of Blue Lights in Indianapolis. Do you guys know about the story of the House of Blue Lights? My mom used to talk about this. It's in Broad Ripple somewhere. It's actually not too far from where I live, I think. I should look it up, and I'll read you guys the story here in a second, because this is like a haunting story in Indianapolis. Like, in Indianapolis, there's one truly haunted place, and it's supposedly the House of Blue Lights. So, um... It has to do with, like, I think a husband and wife. Like, the wife died, and then, like, the husband died. And it, they supposedly, like, haunt this house or something like that. I want to read to you guys about that in just a second. Melissa and Aaron and I are talking about doing, like, paranormal investigations once a month. But we would do them on um, my other channel. I actually need to talk to them about that. Like, we need to figure out a place that we're going to go do one at. I'm going to pull in here to the post office and do it with my glasses with me. And Alex found them. Here they are. Alex handed them to me earlier because I couldn't find them. Uh, don't be doing that tonight. Has it been out of focus all that time? Please tell me no. 
Tell me why. Why well, Nona Judd was on the Andy Cohen Watch What Happens Live the other day. Can I just tell you, she looks so good. She still looks so fantastic. She looks the same age as she did 20 years ago. Was I talking to you guys about that? About how she did, she was talking about how she was like doing covers of the Dead songs, and she performed some or she recorded some of them with Bob Weir from The Grateful Dead, but she referred to him as Robert Weir, and I did talk about that. Cause I was talking about Andy Warhol, that, or not Andy Warhol. I was talking about Andy Cohen that night, and she said that out of respect, like when she would meet like old school singers. Um, I can't remember who she referenced, but she referenced a couple like old school singers. She said, um, like Charlie Daniels, she would never call him Chuck. She would say Charlie, you know, Charles or I can't remember, Mr. Daniels is what she said. Or like, um, like Willie Nelson, she would have said Mr. Nelson. She said, you know, cause I was young when I was growing up with my mom on the circuit. They were talking about, um, it was funny. They were talking about What's his name? Garth Brooks. <laughs> and that Garth Brooks used, like, for a whole tour open for the Judds. And her mom told her one time, she said, um, she said, I don't think um, he's going to make it. I think that he, um, he's a nice guy or something, but I don't think he's going to make it or something. I look at Garth Brooks now, right? Okay. Oh. Get my glasses on. Tell me why. I have that song, Grandpa, on my phone. I love that song, Grandpa. Tell me about the good old days. House of Blue Lights, Indy, Annapolis. Pulled it right up. The House of Blue Lights, um, historic Indianapolis. Here it says, Notebook of Misunderstood people are sometimes feared to The House of Blue Lights. Growing up in the Indianapolis area, the story of the House of Blue Lights was an important part of my paranormal history. Now I'm already scared. The story begins with the tragic death of a millionaire's wife. While the version of the story differed from one storyteller to the next, I was told he kept her in a glass coffin in his mansion surrounding her with blue, her favorite color Christmas lights. Some legends say the lights were around the pool and other areas of his property. Some say you can see a woman walking the property at night, catching glimpses of her in one of the blue lights. Okay. The man behind the blue lights was Skiles Edward Test, which is interesting because God, I thought I saw someone standing over there. That scared the hell out of me. Um, the Skiles Test Elementary School is like five blocks from us. Uh, Skiles Edward Test was born on October 19, 1989 and died March 18, 1964. His father, Charles Test, made his fortune as president of Indianapolis Chain Works. Historic in Indianapolis described his childhood. It goes on here. In 1913, Skiles and his new wife, Josephine uh, Benjes, Benjes, moved into a large wooded and secluded property. His property was remarkable and had a huge, had a full farm, large pool, small rail system, and its own working power plant. He definitely found interesting ways to spend his inheritance, but made sure to share it with his family and community. The tale of the House of Blue Lights popped up sometime in between the two world wars. Author and former farmhand of Skiles, Gary Ledbetter, says, this is closer to World War II. One explanation for these blue lights, according to historical Indianapolis, was that Skiles loved the color blue. He put up blue lights each Christmas and hung blue lights, blue bug zapping lights around his enormous swimming pool. His wife wasn't even dead, but the story took hold, and curious trespassers wanted to peek, wanted to peek at the coffin. Historic Indianapolis describes his nightly visitors and goes through and says this. The House of Blue Lights is a reminder that we must enjoy the tales we hear, but with a critical mind. We become the monster if we get too caught up in the mystery. Where is it? I don't know the address. Where is it at? The House of Blue Lights, Historic Indianapolis. Well, 
Once upon a time, it was a rite of passage for Indianapolis teenagers to park their cars at the end of a long wooded drive off of Fall Creek Road on the northeast side, right up here. <laughs> they traversed the steep hilly woods to get a glimpse of the macabre, a glimpse of a woman's casket wrapped in blue Christmas lights. Kept in the strange house of her mourning husband, others were so bold as to take midnight dip in the eccentric millionaire's elaborate swimming pool, or cruel enough to place one of the dozens of cats that lived on property into the nearby dog. Ooh. Into nearby dog pens. The true mystery surrounding what would become the urban legend known as the House of Blue Lights wasn't the location of Scott's test dead wife. In truth, his wife and two ex-wives ex long outlived him. It's how and why the legend came to be in the first place. Skiles future Indianapolis Motor Speedway co-founder Arthur Newby, which became the Diamond Chain Company. It's still in operation on Kentucky Avenue today in 1900. Where is this house? Oh, it's in Midriff Place. That's way downtown. It's his childhood home, though. At 795 Middle Drive in Woodruff Place. Okay. Why am I so scared? What was that? That pickup truck was like driving around that corner. Did it turn in here? Did it keep on driving? It kept on driving. <laughs> the nineteen seventy five book, The House of Blue Lights by Kay suggested the legend seems to begin to pop up between the two world wars. Old rich man, okay, but there were several variations, but the core legend had it that a rich old man lived in a secluded house in which his beloved wife died by accident. So he kept her in a glass coffin, surrounded it with blue lights, her favorite color, and kept her in his house. A strange tale indeed, especially for a man as well known as Skiles Test, whose wife had not died and who definitely had not fallen victim to some ghostly ac or ghastly accident. But by the mid-1950s, which is when my mom would have been in high school, um... Well, early high school, because she graduated in 61. There were so many trespassers wanting to catch a peek that Skiles had to put up a tall fencing around the entire property. Throughout the 50s and, in, and into the 60s, the trespassers and vandals became increasingly bold. Skiles found a group of teen, teens... Skiles found a group of teens swimming in his pool and took their clothes and keys only to be sued by, sued by one boy's father. Trespassers released dogs from their pens and started fires in outbuildings. Skiles found a teen in his kitchen drinking a Coke he'd taken from the fridge for a while. He took to sleeping in the multi-story pool house at cinder block construction being more fireproof than the house. Plagued with stress-related ulcers, Skiles, Skiles began to leave each night and stayed at his girlfriend's house so as not to be tormented by the nonstop onslaught of looky Liz. He passed away. Skiles passed away on March night. 19th, 1964, and was buried in his family lot in Crown Hill Cemetery. Which is like this huge cemetery here. I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, Crown Hill Cemetery a few days later. The estate sale that followed was nearly as legendary as the house itself. An estimated 50,000 people showed up, some to bid on the loads of assorted items that Skiles had accumulated throughout his years, but most to get a close-up look at Okay, I don't know how long it's been stopped, but I looked up, and um, the battery uh, had died, or the... Um, the, it had stopped and it was at the end of the 30 minutes and then when I started it again the battery had died so but I'm getting real spooked out here so if you don't know we're up to the point where Skiles Test died and then they had a huge estate sale and so now the sale's over a bank took the sale over a bank took control of the property properly drained and fenced off his giant swimming pool and the house of blue lights and its neighboring buildings slowly fell or were torn apart finally the city raised every last structure on the vast property in the mid uh, 1970s. So it doesn't exist anymore? After his death, Skiles intended for his property to become a Boy Scout camp or a nature preserve. According to his will, as long as the city properly maintains the property, it will remain a city-controlled preserve. There are still a few random reminders of what was once the property. The workers in charge of hauling the debris 
from so many raised buildings began to cut corners towards the end of their mission. Near the concrete slab at the top of the hill that once led up to the house, there are random hidden and angle-breaking holes in the ground. The Explorer Me is just positive these lead into the old tunnel between the house and garage. Old ceramic drains pop up around the property and rusty fences are everywhere. Most oddly, random collections of broken china are heaped into piles of garbage cans so rusty that one should get a tetanus shot for looking at them. Though there is little that remains of what was the House of Blue Lights, and the legend isn't quite as widely known today as a few decades ago, a, a few decades ago, it refuses to completely fade away, and there are those who still swear that blue lights may still be seen flickering between the trees, or someone foolhardily an foolheartedly enough were someone foolheartedly enough to walk up the long winding path into the Skiles test woods late at night. No, I would never be doing that. And then this Gary Ledbetter wrote a book called Urban Legend Murder at the House of Blue Lights. My mother back in the day, she swore it was true. Let's see if there's any other things that are haunted Indianapolis. Haunted Indianapolis. Haunted Indianapolis Ghost Walk, it says. <clears throat> the most haunted places in Indianapolis. Hmm, this will be interesting. The only one I know is this place that was called Screaming Bridge in Noblesville when I was growing up as a kid. Allison Mansion. The mansion is a na national historical... The mansion is a national historic landmark believed to be haunted by a little girl who drowned in the basement. Some people say they've seen the girl's ghost. Others believe they hear voices coming from the attic, not the basement, interestingly enough. Or interestingly. Not the basement, interestingly. <laughs> Hannah House. Yeah, you can go to the Hannah House and do ghost tours. The house is said to be built by Alexander Han The house is said to be built by Alexander Hannah, a member of the Underground Railroad. Legend has it, an old oil lamp fell on a bale of, hay of, bale of straw, killing many sleeping slaves. Visitors say the ghosts of the slaves still haunt the cellar. Interesting. Indiana Central State Hospital. Okay, these are now condos. They've turned them into condos. Formerly called the Central Indiana Hospital for the Insane, it opened in 19, or 1848 and was built to treat psychiatric patients. Read more about the hospital here. Okay, I think that it's condos now. Central State Hospital is scary. Paranormal investigator recalls voices at old Central State Hospital for the Insane. When was this written? 2016. The f former pathology building that s still sits on the site now houses the Indiana Medical History Museum. Other portions of the old facility have either been torn down or lie abandoned. It was scary looking. Okay. Um... Rivoli Theater. No list of haunted places is complete without an Indiana burial ground story. The Rivoli Theater was built in 1920. Some people have reported seeing sink faucets turning off and on. I don't even know where that place is. Toilets flushing and objects moving on their own. Indiana Repertory Theater. I have heard of that. Some say a former director for the theater was killed while jogging nearby. On some days, his ghost still haunts inside the building at floor, as floorboards creak. I've heard that one. The Slippery Noodle. I actually have a story about that. The restaurant, would, yep, which also serves as a theater, is said to be haunted by slaves, a caretaker, a cowboy, and a prostitute. The building was built in the 1800s. This has gone through many transformations over the years. Supposedly, um, I have a friend of mine that she's really into paranormal stuff, and she felt like um, I can't, she had, like, knew his name and everything, because she went to the psychic medium about it, that she went to the Slippery Noodle, they play, like, jazz music and stuff there, um, and she went there one night, and she felt like this spirit, like, latched onto her. The Indianapolis Athletic Club, I don't know anything about that. Wheelie Stoke, Wheeler Stokely Mansion. Paul Ruster Park Cemetery, I've never even heard of that. I don't know these places. Most haunted places in Indiana. The Carolina Street Demon House in Gary, Indiana. Okay, so that was bought by, we were just talking about that tonight. That was bought by Zach Bagans. And he said it was so haunted that nobody else should ever go in it again. And he took it down. But the staircase, he took the staircase and it's at his museum in Las Vegas. 
Hacienda Restaurant. Once a private mansion, Hacienda Mexican Restaurant is rumored to be haunted by where? Mishawaka. That's north of Indiana. Avon Haunted Bridge. It's a railroad br bridge built in 1906, a legend goes. Mother was walking with her baby on the tracks when they fell to their deaths. Locals would say every time you drove under the bridge, you had to honk to drown out the sound of the ghost of the mother's wails. Some locals still honk today. EMF rating 84. That's in Avon. That's not too far from here. The reason the Hacienda Mexican restaurant is, uh, it says it's rumored to be haunted by apparitions of those who used to live there. It was because it was a private mansion. Okay. Whispers Estate, Mitchell, Indiana. That's by Bloomington, where IU is. Featured on some TV shows, the estate is said to be the site of many paranormal occurrences, including apparitions, voice phenomena, jiggling doorknobs, tremors, unexplained smell, shaking furniture, and a vortex. Rhodes Hotel. I don't know where that is. Atlanta, and I don't even know where Atlanta, Indiana is. James Allison Mansion, Indianapolis. 3200 Cold Spring Road. Where's that? I mean, I know where that is, but drowned a little girl she'll drown herself wait okay the french lick spring hotel that's where we went for my aunt and uncle's 50th anniversary i heard that was too saint mary's college that doesn't surprise me zion united church of christ cemetery Carolina Street Demon House demolished, it says. Hotel Attica. Hmm. Tunnelton Tunnel. Bedford, Indiana. Hannah House. Indiana Central State Hospital. Rockport Inn. Boone Hutchinson Cemetery. Indiana Repertory Theater. Step Cemetery. These are all bonuses. Ivy House. Where's that? Fortville. Oh, that's right up here. Built in 1921 by Dr. Jess E. Farrell, the Ivy House Bed and Breakfast is said to have, I drive by this all the time while I'm vlogging, is said to have a haunt that came with the purchase of an antique piano. The owners say the instrument brought with it a ghost who makes the decidedly non-musical sounds of banging and footsteps. Hmm. Slippery Noodle, Athletic Club, Paul Ruster Park Cemetery. And where was the last one? Paul Ruster Park Cemetery. I'm just in Indianapolis. I have never heard of that before. <sighs> Such haunted things go on. Things that go bump in the night, right? Let's read some of the comments. I have not gotten onto the vlog comments. I'm just going to read a few. Dream. Uh, Zoe gave blue hearts. That's funny, Mom gave orange hearts and Halloween things. Queen Mary novel writer, you always are so good about commenting. She said, Happy Halloween. Kristen said, The car that you said about the stickers you've mentioned before. You know what? I, I thought that when I was like driving. I really did. I was like, I'm going to sound crazy if I say that, but. Um. Stephanie said, hello, hello, hello. Literally sitting here eating pasta salad with Olive Garden dressing and black olives with Parmesan cheese. The kind in the green box. So good. I love it. Kelly said, what kind of car does uh, Peter drive? I drive a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, uh, M-A-M or ma'am of two said, Peter, you are taking the fun out of listening to books. Please, instead of making your goals slow down. I don't enjoy listening to them slow. I feel like they talk like that. It was like when Caroline was saying it to me. I was like, girl, I don't know how you listen to it that slow. Um... Marcia said, try calling uh, Hulu customer service and they should be able to fix it. For That's actually a really good suggestion. I don't know why I never thought of that. Um, Lucy said... Hi, Peter. You should get a Christmas tree for inside your house somewhere. I'm going to next to the fireplace. 
Um, the one that I put up like last year. With, did I put it up last year? I don't know. But I'm gonna put it up definitely this year. Get in the festive spirit. Don't you love how Christmas trees look inside with the lights? And the, yes, I do love that so much. Um, also, I hope Alex does not care if you sleep all through the night. No, he doesn't care. He doesn't care when I vlog. It seems like he is always asking if you need to go vlog. But just because he knows that like I feel like I'll like, if I don't get it done, I feel bad. Um, you should try to sleep through the night like literally everyone else does and just vlog in the daytime and get on some type of normal sleeping schedule. It would be good for you. Take care. Well, I appreciate that, Lucy. Um, I mean, people that work third shift don't sleep through the night, but um, here's the thing. And like I've explained this before and I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but like, so if I get up and I appreciate what you were saying, but if I get up and I vlog during the day and then I'm making videos at home, okay, and let's say on a good day I make a drama video, a Peterisms video, and I love doing this, right? But like I make a drama video, a Peterisms video, a booktube video, um, a review video, okay, that's four videos that I'm making, right? Because I don't make, you know, I don't make a Peter Does Stuff video every day or a booktube video every day. So let's just say, between three and four videos a day I'm making. Sometimes I make two on my drama channel or whatever, right? And then every time I get into my car to go run an errand during the day or just drive around, I'm vlogging. I like don't have a lot of time where I just get to listen to an audiobook or um, I just get to listen to music or just talk on the phone or anything. And just to be honest with you, like, I don't want a camera on me 24 hours a day. You know what I mean? Like, I just wouldn't, in I don't know that I would enjoy that. So, I, w I mean, I don't know. I mean, give me a reality show and we'll talk about it. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like, I want to be able to, uh, I also don't want it to feel like I'm just like, like kicking the vlog out. Like, I have to kind of be in the mood to sit and talk in the car for, like, a while. You know, like, I have to be in the mood to have a conversation. Like, if I'm tired, like, I don't want to, and I'm like, oh, God, I don't want to, like, have to go vlog. Like, I want to vlog when I'm, like, in the mood to vlog, if that makes sense. So, I'm kind of at the point now where, like, if I fall asleep and I sleep through the night, I just turn my alarm off and I'm like, I'll get up tomorrow morning and when I get up, I'll do it. And then, um... If I get it done that night, I get it done. Like tonight, I'm like really glad I got it done and I want to listen to my audiobook. I hear what you're saying. You know, the thing is this also, like if I get up between seven and eight, like I'm ready to go to sleep at four o'clock in the afternoon. So, um, I don't know. I'm probably, I have never in my life had a normal sleeping schedule and I probably never will. But thank you anyway, Lucy. I appreciate it. Lucy's been around here for a long time. Um... Marcia said, I like the Bath and Body Works pillow spray. It's lavender and vanilla. I'll have to try it. Um, Morgan said, hello, 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 dear. Your hair looks fabulous. I'm doing caramel apples with my... Oh, how fun. Aaron said, no one hates Walmart more than me, but their jersey sheets are really good. Are real good. I'm going to have to try those. Tiffany gave a blue hearts and a smiley face. Crystal said, Batter okay, Canon batteries and charging sucks. I swear it loses juice even when not being used. I swear to God, too. Like, I don't know what that's about, but I'm right there with you. She said, I have, like, five backups, and they all are never working when I need them. And when I charge them fully to have as backups, it's so annoying, really. I agree with you. Crystal said, I used to have bumper stickers on my car until I learned how serial killers and criminals work. I don't know what you mean by that. Can you let me know? Ma'am said, I just love how involved your dad was with you. That isn't always the case, but now, but wow, how cool you're looking. My dad was really, really involved with me. I love my dad. Melissa said, it was so cute. I showed my mom one of your videos. She said, he reminds me of a teddy bear. Aw. <laughs> Coyote said, yes, Mexican Cokes in the glass bottles are made with cane sugar. Be careful, though. They've recently released normal American Cokes, two in the glass bottles. Read the ingredients to get the real Mexican Cokes. Okay. I used to drink those little Cokes when I was a kid. I was obsessed with those little Cokes in the bottle. 
Best said Succession on HBO is the best thing ever. I've watched it in a long, in a, I watched, it's the best thing I've watched in a long time. Excellent. Wait, someone, what Aaron was telling me tonight about, oh shoot, what's the show? It's got, um, oh, it's about like farmers. It's three seasons, she said. And they're out in Montana. They own a bunch of land in Montana. You guys know what I'm talking about. Monet said, happy Halloween. Or, hello, Peter. Happy Halloween. Hey, hey, Tammy. Everybody's talking about this Mexican Coke and how good it is. I've got to figure out... Uh, who just said that they bought it from Costco? Emmy said that she bought it from Costco. So I'm going to go there and see. Hi to everybody just saying Hi. Who just said that about Odonna? <laughs> Hold on a second. I just saw it. How did I miss this? My hand is itching. Wendy said, dream and Odonna. I love it. I actually started dancing, <laughs> singing with you. Oh, Wendy. Oh, Wendy. Oh. Wendy. Jonesy said, you have to settle into Shit's Creek. You have this group of awful people in the beginning. As it goes along, you get slivers of good in them. The little ways these moments evolve. I think Shit's Creek is one of the most endearing shows I've ever seen in my entire life. I loved it from beginning to end. But I do say that after the first season, it gets better. Uh, Hannah said, can, Peter, can you eat imitation crab meat as a vegetarian? Imitation crab meat has, and then Zoe said, no, it has fish in it. I was a vegetarian for four years. Alex has a friend that's vegan, and she used to make a vegan crab meat rangoon. I don't know how she made it, but I wasn't, like, having him for it. Like, that's, like, I can eat, like, the morning star, like, chicken and stuff like that because I don't have an issue with that, but I never really liked fish anyway, so I can't imagine eating, like, fake fish. And do you know what's really weird as I'm thinking about it is there's not really a lot of fake fish alternatives. <laughs> there, are there, like, morning star? You don't see, like, fake fish sandwiches? Or maybe there are, and I just haven't ever looked because I don't eat that. Jose said, do you guys always go out for dinner because I never see you guys cook something or you say I'll make something for No, we don't cook. Hardly ever. Like, almost never. Um, <laughs> neither one of us really enjoys it. Alex makes really great salads. And I usually make a pot of chili, like, once in the fall. But, no, we don't really cook. Um, oh, that AC book is so good. Big fan of AC. Who's AC? Oh, Agatha Christie. Amy said, I've lost 110 pounds in the last year on Weight Watchers. Best thing I ever joined. Still got around 30 more to go. Easiest lifestyle change ever. I still eat fast food 90% of the time and never deprive myself of anything. Aw. You eat fast food 90% of the time, Lord. Okay, Jose, it's so funny because people always are like, you guys don't cook. You don't like, you don't like to cook. And they're always like, oh, you should cook. And I'm like, I don't enjoy cooking. You know what's so funny, though, is, like, I have so many friends of mine that, like, love to cook. And there's something to me that just is, like, so attractive about, like, cooking, you know? Like, like in most of our friends that are, like, male-female couples, like, it's the man that cooks and, like, really enjoys cooking and is really good at it. And there's something very attractive to me about the whole idea of, like, loving to cook, but I just don't. Like, neither one of us do. And I even said to Alex, I said, maybe we should take, like, a cooking class, you know? Like, maybe that would be, like, a fun way for us to bond or whatever. And he was totally down to do it. That was a couple years ago, and then we were just kind of like, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Kara, she said, I really hate scary movies, so I've never seen Halloween, but I really enjoy the review video with Melissa. She seems so fun. Um, Kara, you need to watch Halloween. Okay, but it is scary even during the day. Magic Me said, let's all go to the Costco. Let's all go to the Costco. Let's all go to the Costco and get ourselves a treat. <laughs> Sarah 
Stacy said some schools in Wisconsin had a day off for what used to be teacher's convention, but now it's fall break. Do you remember that teacher's convention? I remember that too. Maybe that'll explain the busy stores near you. I swear to God, I keep on, I can't be talking and <laughs> I can't be talking <laughs> and looking at this phone anymore. I keep on feeling like somebody is like walking up to my window. Do you guys remember the night that I was um, in my, uh, this still freaks me out, you guys. The night that I have to get out of here. Um, in my driveway and I was vlogging and, um, hold on a second. Do you remember the night that I was vlogging in my driveway and I said, I feel like somebody just walked behind my car and I went like that. And do you remember when I did it, the orb came down like that? No, ma'am, uh-uh. If there's orbs in this video, I don't even wanna know about it. <laughs> but I need to go, cause I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared of standing around here. I'll tell you what goes bump in the night, me. <laughs> Woo. All right, well that was fun. But I'm gonna get off here now and um, listen to my audiobook for a little bit. And um, yeah, not too much longer though, because it's like, I'm gonna be so tired with the daylight savings time and stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna get off here now. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Sunday, a fantastic November 1st. Merry Christmas, happy Christmas get ready for all kinds of Christmas stories and thank you guys for all your comments and for watching all the time I really really appreciate it it means a lot to me I love vlogging so much and this is just like so cathartic for me to get in the car and talk I actually tonight I was like Tanya was like are you gonna vlog for a long time I was like I don't know I'm getting kind of tired and I want to listen to my audiobook I said I'll probably do it short like 20 or 30 minutes and I think I went like an hour and a half or something because <laughs> I have so much fun once I get on here so I really appreciate it um if you guys made it this far I want you to leave all Christmas emojis in the comments no should we do Christmas emojis yes put all Christmas emojis in the comments it will freak people out they won't know why put all Christmas emojis in the comment section below and um yeah, and I hope you guys are having an amazing Sunday, unless you have other plans. But like I always say, don't have other plans. Make the most of your day. Do something fun today. Do something exciting. I'm going to make this real quick. If nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Um, let some, uh, most importantly, let somebody know how much they mean, how much they mean to you. Just reach out to somebody, text them, call them, or just stop by their house and, if you can and say, you know, or just wave to them on the street. Hey, how are you? It's good to see you. And practice random acts of kindness. Like I also always say, practice random acts of kindness, but like I also always say, don't uh, tell anyone. And always lead with love. Let's put goodness, kindness, forgiveness, compassion, peace and serenity out there in the world and always lead with love like it says in the four agreements. And remember you can start your day over whenever you want. And I just love you guys a lot. I really do. And um, we made it through another Halloween. I can't believe you guys, I've been doing this for four years every night with the exception of just a couple different, you know, a couple nights. It's crazy, isn't it? Anyway, um, I love you guys so much and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.